Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight. I'm Mike Kenichi. I'm very excited tonight because we have a very special guest. If you know the name Palmieri, you could think about Tommy Palmieri, Jason Palmieri of the 80s and 90s, and of course, the future Palmieri, who's going to take, take his next step into the collegiate level for Sacred Heart University. He's had a tremendous career at both Woodland High School and Cheshire Academy. It is my honor to introduce <clears throat> Jason Palmieri. And Jason, I want to thank you for coming on today. It's a real honor. Yeah, thank you for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. So, Jay, let me ask you, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but how did the love for football really begin for you? Yeah, like you said, I'm sure you know, but um, growing up in the Palmieri household, it's pretty much the first thing I put into my arms. So um, my father playing for as long as he did, my, my mom the way that she grew up and my uncles and my grandparents. I mean, it's just pretty much all that was around me growing up. Right. So, Jason, I also know that uh, you played basketball. You played for Woodland, obviously, I think Cheshire. But you also uh, tried baseball as well. I mean, did you have a sport that you loved more than the other as a kid or was it always football first? Well, actually, probably during uh, late elementary and middle school, I loved playing basketball. That was really like my main sport. Especially, you know, um, uh, Coach Anderson, uh, he coaches at Nagy right now. Uh, he was always my basketball coach. He coached me all throughout, like I said, elementary and, ba- and uh, middle school. But once I got to high school, it was pretty much strictly football. Uh, I loved playing football. So that's where kind of the, ga- the love for the game grew. Right. So let me ask you, Jason. I mean, you probably had access a lot between YouTube, other stuff. Did, were you able to see old tape of your father playing? I mean, like when you watch him play, I mean, did you say to yourself, wow, I want to go out there and do that myself? I mean, yeah, um, definitely growing up anytime that, uh, you know, we're going out to family parties or something like that. Everyone would always say, hey, you know, your dad was a pretty good football player back in the day. And anytime he had the opportunity, he'd show me the clips from the state championship game or senior highlights. But always seeing that, I thought it was really cool how um, one day I'd be able to follow in his footsteps and stuff like that. And I just always tried to do the best that I could. So, Right. So, Jason, how old were you when you first started playing football? Um, you played Pop Warner, correct? Yeah, I played probably – oh, geez, I don't even know. Played as early as they let you play. So right. I played flag football for a couple of years. As soon as I was eligible for tackle, they threw me in tackle. So quite a while ago. And it's interesting you bring up flag football because I really believe that's a great way for a kid to start playing. You're not doing full contact, but you also are in the pads and you're learning how to block. You're learning how to, you know, do different things. So, I mean, flag football is definitely a great thing for young kids to start out before they go to tackle. Yeah, I I completely agree. I mean, uh, especially with all you see all the injuries happening today with that, like the head injuries and stuff. So it's like a great way for the um, for younger generation, younger kids, the gateway to high school football and, you know, late Pop Warner. Right. So let me ask you, in flag football, <laughs> what positions did you play those first couple of years? I'd say my young career was definitely always running back. Running back, yeah. With my my father being the running back that he was, it was definitely always running back. So. Right. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but your father also coached you a little bit in both flag and Pop Warner, right? I mean, I know he was definitely the head coach for a couple seasons in Pop Warner, correct? Yeah, he definitely was. And flag, I believe he actually started the like the Woodland, uh, Woodland flag program. And he always coached me um, probably up until I got to high school. So even up to my eighth grade year, he was my he was my uh, my coach. Right. Now, Woodland football started in 2001, so it's only 21 years old. So while you were a kid, it wasn't even 20 years old yet. I mean, but were you a big Woodland fan? I mean, were you going to Woodland football games a lot being from that area? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, I thought Woodland was a great and Beacon Falls was a great place to grow up. And uh, going to the Woodland games every Friday night after, you know, Pop Warner practice or stuff like that was definitely something that. I looked forward to doing, and I always looked forward to eventually playing um, Friday night. So it was definitely something that me and my my parents always looked forward to doing. Right. So let me ask you, Jason, um, when you finally got to Pop Warner, what was what would you say was the thing that you liked the most, and what was the most challenging thing early on in your career? In Pop Warner, I mean, uh, I would say the thing that I liked the most was just games, just 
Plus, right. You know, it's simple. I mean, practices weren't the best. I didn't really like practices back then, but I always loved playing in the games. It was my favorite time of the week. And then something that was challenging, probably keeping that motivation to go to practice, honestly. Yeah. I mean, when you're a younger kid, you don't want to go and uh, run sprints for your father out in the field every day. So it's, that was probably the most challenging thing. And the thing is, too, Jason, like, it's not like high school. High school starts their first practice, like, the last week of August. And Pop Warner, you start the first week of August. So your summer kind of gets uh, – it cuts into your summer a little bit. So, I mean, as a young kid, you have to kind of commit yourself to realize, okay, July, I'm going to have the whole July off. But come August 1st, I'm going to be going to practice every night. So it's a lot, It's a commitment for a young kid at a young age. But, I mean, you see so many kids do it. And I have always said this, that Pop Warner really helps you get prepared for that high school level. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as a young kid, you don't want to see your summer go to waste. But, I mean, um, it's definitely a commitment worthwhile, I'd say. So I thought it was always a good time. Right. So let me ask you, Jason, Um, I think you uh, played for a couple of different towns in Pop Warner. I mean, I think uh, definitely uh, – did you play for Prospect or did you play for Beacon Falls? or? Yeah, which- so the Woodland – it was always the Woodland of Pop Warner team. It was like Prospect and Beacon Falls together. So I usually yeah. – I always played for um, – in my younger, younger ages. So I played for the Woodland Pop Warner and the Woodland Flag – then, as I grew older a little bit, um, I actually almost went and played in Oxford. And after that didn't really work out, I actually played one year in Ansonia. And then yes. I think that was my seventh grade year, I played in Ansonia. And then following that year, my eighth grade year, I came back to Woodland and I played. So Right. And Ansonia and Woodland kind of have had a rivalry for a while now. It started with Coach Anderson when – he was coaching at Woodland. Um, he was able to knock them off a couple times. So was it a little weird for you to be wearing an Ansonia? Ne- never mind the fact that your father played for Derby. It had to be weird yeah. for him. But was it a little strange, like, to be wearing the Ansonia colors for that one year? Yeah, it was definitely weird. I'm sure it was really weird for my father. But um, as far as me, at the time, I didn't really know. So, I mean, I, in seventh grade, I didn't know the – true meaning of it obviously when I get to high school you get to know uh, more things but I mean as a seventh grader I just thought that it was weird I was wearing different colors but um, as far as the true like meaning of the rivalry I didn't really have that much of an idea right so let me ask you at a young age I mean did you have a preference that you liked more did you like offense more or did you like defense more because you're a heck of a running back but you were also very good on the defensive side of the ball and I mean I know when I talked to your father a few years back, he is great of a runner as he was. He loved playing defense a little more. I mean, did you have a preference? I mean, I always loved playing defense. Defense was really fun. I always loved hitting people, obviously. And um, but at the end of the day, there's nothing better, I think, than carrying the ball and scoring touchdowns. Right. And the thing is, too, Jason, um, again, I talk about this at a young age. You have to, you know, remember your spots know where to go on each side of the ball. It's not easy for a young kid to retain a lot of that stuff. But, I mean, it seems like these coaches do a great job at the Pop Warner level, the AYF level, because these kids always, you know, execute these things with such, uh, you know, effortlessly sometimes. I mean, they do it so well. And that's not easy for young kids at that age to uh, retain all that information. Yeah, that's definitely one of the the difficulties because at a young age, I mean – what kids are going to learn 30, 20, even 20 plays. So uh, it's definitely difficult, but I do think that at least when I was growing up, the coaches, including my father, made it pretty easy. To, I mean, having the play cards, going over film, going over um, play sheets at practice, doing a good job of making us younger kids really understand the game at a, you know, a true level. Right. Now, Jason, you were a very good basketball player, as I mentioned before. I mean, I think you were starting at Woodland as a sophomore. So, I mean, let me ask you, did you play in a lot of travel leagues, AAU teams when you were a kid? I mean, you played a lot of basketball growing up as well, correct? Yeah, I probably – growing up, I mean, I, did, I played more basketball than I played football. So, like I said earlier, Coach Anderson was my coach, and um, we were probably playing 60-game basketball seasons in middle school. We were playing tournaments on Christmas weekend. We were playing – we were playing every day, almost two or three games a day sometimes. So – I definitely grew up playing more basketball than football. 
Right. And speaking of Coach Anderson, his son Brady, who was a very good basketball player for Woodland, I think he's the same age as you. So, I mean, you played with him a lot over the years. Just talk about playing with him. And, I mean, it has to be pretty cool because your father and Chris were very good friends, and then you and Brady kind of get to carry on that tradition, being good friends growing up together. So talk about him a little bit. Yeah, I love Brady. That's my boy. So um, growing up, we always, like I said, we we kind of got brought together from – um, obviously our parents, our fathers, uh, them being the friends that they, that they were growing up. And, uh, I, we definitely formed a little bit of a bond on the basketball team. Like we're, like I was saying, playing 60 game seasons in middle school, that's tough, but, um, and then playing for the middle school team. And then once we get to the high school playing on the high school team as well, but obviously Brady didn't play football, but, um, I loved basketball just as much. So, um, I thought it was really cool how, um, our fathers kind of bridged us together and we became pretty good friends. Right. And think about Woodland's success, uh, Jason, because every sport they seem to do so well. And I mean, I think about their running program, which was tremendous. Their baseball teams had a good run. I think they made the finals last year. Uh, Their basketball program has been very good. And obviously their football program has stood the test of time. So, I mean, for a school that's only 21 years old, it's really made its mark in high school sports because They've got, you know, every sport they seem to really excel in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, growing up in um, probably my freshman and sophomore year, I, I was kind of surprised by, you know, the small towns that we are, the Be- uh, Beacon Falls being as small as it is and Prospect being pretty mu- pretty small town too. Uh, going up against bigger schools and competing, I mean, it's definitely – maybe we don't have the best athletes at Woodland, but, I, I mean, I could tell you that there's a lot of – tough, gritty, hard-nosed players there in every single sport. So they love to work hard. Right. And, you know, Jason, um, another big fan of yours, I mean, and she was a pretty good athlete as well as your sister. And, I mean, she's always kind of been supportive of you, and you got to see her at Woodland. So just talk about the bond you two have, because I know she's one of your biggest fans. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my mom <laughs> – that picture. My mom <laughs> and my dad are definitely um, two, two of my biggest fans then – Probably number one is definitely my sister. I won't lie. Uh, she never tries to. She tries to never miss a game. Um, always supportive, supportive of me. Always uh, making sure that I'm getting my training in, even though she cracks a couple jokes at me sometimes. But she knows that I love the grind, and she definitely supports me all the way. Right. So let's talk about high school. And I mean, what a way to start your freshman year, Jason. And you started on both sides of the ball for Woodland your freshman year. Just talk about that experience, because I mean. I know you're a very confident kid, but when you're a freshman in high school and you're 14 years old and you're playing in a varsity game, it's fun to be out there and it's great that you're starting, but there had to be some nerves a little bit early on, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, that summer conditioning, uh, summer workouts definitely were tough on me being as young as I was. But um, uh, the seniors that I had that year, I got to give a lot of credit to them. That whole senior class, I mean, and those senior captains, Carter and Moore, um, Josh Hassan, my cousin, uh, Eddie Krifka, and Joe Shea, they pushed me really, really hard because I knew that um, I could become a pretty good player one day, and they definitely pushed me in the right the right direction. I'd say that um, after that first game against Torrington, it was jitters were out, first game jitters were out, and then I just had a pretty good season the rest of the way. Right, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, Coach Anderson was the offensive coordinator that year, so, I mean, it, you talk about having great coaching. I mean, you're going to have a guy that, I mean, he's an offensive genius. So, I mean, it's got to be a good feeling to have somebody out there that knows the game like he does and he's calling the plays and you're learning so much just by his experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my father always told me growing uh, growing up and getting to high school, getting middle school, um, if I want to be serious about football, definitely stick around Coach Anderson because he knows what he's talking about. I remember even back playing – Mudcats baseball, you know, travel baseball. Um, he'd take me out into the, um, where is it, the Waterbury field, the one that uh, turns into the football field. And before the games, he would take me out to the football field and run over plays with me before our baseball games around the middle school. I mean, he's definitely always wanted me, to be, wanted me to be great, and he's definitely pushed me in the right direction. Right. And the thing is, too, what I really liked, uh, Jason, is uh, you seemed very confident that first year. And, I mean, you're playing against – some tough competition. I mean, you got the Ansonias, the Naugatucks, the Seymours. I mean, you're playing in tough teams. And I mean, even Holy Cross, I mean, uh, Torrington, as you mentioned, is a, you know, 
always a battle. So, I mean, you're playing against these tough teams, but really, I mean, that's how you improve and that's how you really get the confidence is even if you have some, um, you know, tough moments along the way, you really are able to get that experience and that's got to be very beneficial. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm the type of player and I'm the type of kid, I think that uh, I want to play the best. So obviously I, when we're going up against Antonio, we're going up against Seymour, rival schools like that. Um, I'm going to be locked in that week and I'm going to try and, you know, have one of my best games of the year. So uh, it's definitely, I, it's a challenge that I enjoy. Right. And Jason, um, let me ask you, like one of the things that you were very good at as well was special teams. I mean, you were tremendous there. How important is special teams to the game? Because I think sometimes people forget the significance of special teams, but I mean, it plays such a big part, especially in high school football. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's three phases to the game. It's offense, defense, and special teams. And uh, they all play a significant role. I mean, they would always tell us growing up, um, you win two phases of two phases of the game, you'll most likely win the game. So I special teams, I mean, my freshman year, I obviously wasn't the premier back maybe like I am now, getting the ball 10, 15 times a game on offense. So I knew that I'd have to try and make an impact on the special team side of the ball. And I always thought what's more electrifying, which, which, what's more, um, what's more, uh, what's more game breaking really than making a play on special teams. So, right. So let me ask you, I know you played varsity and you hardly ever came out of the game freshman year, but did you play any JV or freshman sometimes that year as well? Or was it strictly varsity? No, I've, uh, no, I don't think one time I've never played in a JV football game. Wow. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. I mean, cause usually everybody plays JV. So that says a lot about you as a player. Now, Another important thing, Jason, too, which has become a big part of high school football is obviously the importance of going over film every week, seeing what you did right, what you did wrong. How important is that to you? And I mean, you're probably able to see things on film and be like, yeah, wow, I, you know, I was I made that block good or wow, you know, I missed that tackle, whatever it might be or missed that assignment. So how important is it to, um, to have film involved? I think film is probably the most important part of the game. Obviously, if you make a good play in a game, people will see it. You score a touchdown, someone's going to see it. But as far as the things you don't do right, a lot of people don't really see that. If you miss a block, it's not really going to be seen in the game. You go look at film, I mean, and you break it down, you'll know if you missed a block or if you ran the wrong route. And next game, maybe you won't do that. So you score another touchdown or you'll make another big block. So looking at film, I would say is definitely probably the most important part. Right. So another big fan of yours, Jason, you touched on it earlier. You brought her up by your mother. And I mean, she is always out there cheering you on. And I mean, she is maybe your biggest fan. Cause I mean, she's always out there rooting you on. So just talk about, because I mean, at the end of the day, it's important to have your parents support. And I mean, both of them have been so supportive, but she's always, you know, at every game, no matter what you do, from the time you were a little kid and it's got to be awesome to have that support. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know my parents support me pretty much in every step of the way, no doubt. Um, my mom, she does everything for me. That's, you know, from giving me money for gas or doing my laundry or bringing me to practice when I wasn't able to drive. So uh, I really appreciate everything that my parents and my sister do for me. Right. So let's talk about a uh, sophomore year. Cause that was a big year for you. I mean, yeah. it's not easy to make a, uh, all NBL first team as a sophomore. It's not even easy to make it as a junior. You make all NBL first team offense and you also make class S all state, which is a huge honor. Talk about your sophomore year. That was a good year for you. Good year for Woodland. And I mean, did you feel at that point that you had really arrived as far as a high school player that you were going to be a force in the game for a long time to come? Yeah, definitely. After my freshman year, I mean, um, I had a pretty good year. And um, I knew that with the players that were leaving, uh, I really had an opportunity to step up and be the main guy. So uh, going into that summer, sophomore year summer, I really trained hard. And um, I was grateful enough that um, the coaches and all the other players put their trust in me as an underclassman. And luckily, I was able to step up. So I'm glad you brought that up because summer training is very important, especially the conditioning part of it, because you don't want to come into that season out of shape. And captain's practice, which has always been a very 
big part of the football, you know, because the coaches can't show up till, you know, that last week of August. So being able to do captain's practice, the weightlifting, how, how much of the, would you say that plays an impact in the game of football? Definitely. Uh, definitely plays a huge impact. So, I mean, if you go into the game, not as strong or not as fast or even not, not as conditioned as your opponent, they're going to wear you out. They're going to overpower you. So being as, you know, as, I'd say as a small team as we were, because we were we were really a small team. I mean, we had Alec Tobo my sophomore year. He was a big guy, but um, as far as that, we didn't really have any big big guys. So I, we all knew that we had to be the most conditioned, the strongest. We had to really push ourselves in the weight room that year if we had to replicate our as good of a season, if not better, um, than we had my freshman year. Right. So talk about though being uh, selected to the All NBL team and the Class S All State because. I mean, you're a 15-year-old kid. I mean, that had to be a great feeling. I mean, you, basically, you know as well as anyone that coaches play a lot of impact on that. They discuss it and stuff like that. So they're seeing – those coaches are seeing you play throughout the year. And for them to choose you as a sophomore, it had to make you feel really good. Yeah, it was definitely made me feel really good. I mean, going into the season, it was a goal that I've had. That I, had. Um, I definitely wanted to make all in VL. And uh, I like to reach for the stars, I guess you could say. So I really wanted to push for all state. And um, so I just played played my butt off during the season. And I actually I remember getting the text from Coach Mafo uh, that night telling me that I went all state, and I just couldn't be happier. It was something that I really wanted for myself. Yeah, and it was a great accomplishment. So talk about your sophomore year of basketball, though, Jay, because you had a good year that year as well. You started for Woodland. I mean, great team. I mean play and coach Anderson was one of the coaches if I remember correctly and you're playing with Brady again and stuff just talk about that season because I mean again as good a football player as you are you're a tremendous basketball player as well and I think sometimes that gets a little unnoticed because people see what you do on the football field and sometimes it overshadows what you do on the basketball court yeah yeah like I said uh, prior, um, basketball was probably my first love. I always loved playing basketball, going out, going outside, uh, playing in the driveway. But uh, my sophomore year definitely was a good one. Um, it was actually my last year of basketball. So um, after that, I, I just c- called the quits, decided to focus on football. But I had a lot of fun that year, playing with Brady, playing with my buddy Nate, uh, Nathan Bodner, Rob Moriarty, playing with a bunch of group of guys, and then those seniors like Nathaniel Smith. Joey Giuliani, definitely a great group of guys, great group of kids, that um, great friends that I'll have for the rest of my life. I really, really enjoyed it. And the thing is, too, Jay, is that NBL is tremendous in basketball. you got a lot of great teams. I mean, Naugatuck is always good. You've got uh, Kennedy on a lot of years are very good. Holy Cross, I mean, Torrance. There's so many good teams in that NBL. And even Derby and Ansonia had a nice little run when you were playing where they had a lot of talent. So, I mean, the games were always intense, always fun. I mean, that competition part for you had to be exciting because, I mean, it probably brought out the best in you as a player playing against good teams like that. Yeah, definitely. The NVL is, I mean, for basketball, you could argue it's one of the best leagues in the state to play. I mean, Sacred Heart that year, they were they were really loaded. They had a lot of guys. Naugatuck was really loaded that year. Uh, I know they were very, very good. But um, the level of competition, I mean – I love going up against guys like that. I mean, obviously basketball wasn't my main sport at the time. There was a lot of players that were better than me at basketball, obviously. But um, I like the challenge. I like stepping up to guys like that. So, And, you know, speaking of challenges, Jason, you decided your junior year to go to Cheshire Academy. But before I ask you about that, COVID <laughs> affected so many athletes. I mean, their seasons were taken away. And – your season, you had to go a year without playing football, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, how tough was that for you to go a whole season not playing? Because, I mean, you loved the game so much, but you also, I'm sure, were a little worried. Wow, you know, I lost the whole year. That's going to be hard. So just talk about the COVID year. I mean, definitely was tough on me, really. Um, I remember probably for about a couple of weeks, if not a couple of months, not knowing if we were going to have a football season or not. Kind of just they were – um, leaving us on the fence, I really didn't know. It was uh, one day I would hear, yeah, we're going to start practice next week. The next day I would say, I would hear, oh, no, someone on the team got COVID. We got to cancel, shut it down. But it was definitely um, messed with me a little bit. 
didn't know what to do. But uh, once I knew that the season was officially canceled, I mean, I took it as an opportunity, you know, train, get get as good as I possibly can and uh, really take my game to the next level and just, you know, see what happens. Right. And speaking of what happened, I mean, what a junior year you had. And the big thing going into that season, Jason, which I'm <clears> sure you probably heard it a little bit, was can Jason Palmieri play at a prep school? You know, big schools, very good teams, a lot of talent. And, boy, I mean, if there was anybody doubting if you could play, I mean, you sure put that to bed real quick. I mean, talk talk about a junior year that you had. I mean, uh, first team all conference. I mean, you were the team MVP. Talk about that junior season at Cheshire Academy. And let me ask you, I mean, what was the difference between uh, playing for Woodland and now playing for Cheshire Academy? So, I mean, going into that year, I was, I was very, very nervous. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I was very nervous, but I was also – I was very eager to play. I knew that I was going to take a big jump uh, in talent level um, in size, speed. Everything was was taking a big jump, but I was ready for the challenge. Um, it was always in the back of my mind that a lot of people were doubting me. I mean, people did not really take it um, – people did not take it lightly when I told everyone I was leaving Woodland. I'll tell you that, but um, – Uh, Going into that year, after probably, like I said, after the first game, after the first game jitters, I kind of turned it on. I got comfortable, and I saw that, you know, I could play with these guys. I definitely could play with these guys. And uh, that team that I had my junior year last year, um, it's a bit different uh, than Woodland. I mean, you grow up with all those kids at Woodland. You're in a public school. But um, at prep school, you've got kids from not only all over the country. We had people from Canada. Germany I mean you're playing with kids from all over the world so it was definitely a lot different but um I thought that a lot of the kids and a lot of the coaches they made it real easy to you know make as make a brotherhood brotherhood like we like we did at Woodland so right and speaking of which though Jason it you know when you go to a prep school like that it's not just athletics you gotta excel academically and I mean you proved that you're not only a great athlete but you're an exceptional student I mean You've been an honor student since the day you got there. Just talk about being able to maintain your grades and playing sports because that's not easy to do both. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely definitely tough to balance the both, but I'll tell you, uh, Cheshire Academy, they, they made it pretty easy with the balancing schedule. They gave me a lot of help, a lot of, um, a lot of time in the classroom, uh, a lot of time with college counseling help, helping me after class. But um, I definitely just – my parents always push me um in the classroom because maybe that I know my father didn't do it too well in the classroom so he made sure to always push me in the classroom do a little bit better than he did in that in that aspect right so let me ask you though Jason I mean you come to that new school I mean um you you're getting all these uh accolades but I mean to be named team MVP that had to be a a real cool thing for you because you're at a new school you're trying to prove yourself and in your first year at that school you're recognized as the team MVP. So that just says a lot about the work and dedication that you give to yourself. And the one thing I noticed, Jason, from the time you were a freshman to the present is you've done a great job in the weight room because, I mean, you've really bulked up in the last few years. And, I mean, that's important too. you got to be strong to play against these type of teams. So, I mean, you really dedicated yourself to be the very best you could be. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my time at Woodland, I didn't take – that aspect as serious as I probably should have as far as, you know, the diet, the the weightlifting and everything. But I knew that going to Cheshire, um, I was going to have to start taking that stuff serious. Um, I really um, cut down on, you know, bad eating. I really, um, really had to get strict in the way I eat, really had to get strict in the way I was training, uh, recovering, and it showed. I, I put on weight. I got faster. I got leaner. Um, really helped me going into that year. Right. So let me ask you, uh, Jason, I mean, how would you evaluate that season? Not just like as an individual sense, but as a team goal. I mean, you talked about the brotherhood. I mean, that team was really like a family that year, correct? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, that junior year, uh, since following COVID, there was a lot of people transferring. So I think we had maybe 23 to 25 incoming transfer juniors that did the same thing as me, read class. So it was pretty – the whole team was brand new. And I thought that kind of helped us a little bit as far as making a brotherhood and forming that bond because we were all in the same – you know, we were all in the same boat. So um, it definitely helped us in that aspect. 
we didn't have the record that we wanted. Uh, I think we finished four and four. But um, I mean, as far as the brotherhood that we formed and the friendships that we ma- that I made, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to these kids for the rest of my life. Right. So, you know, senior year was a big year, Jason, but not only because of your accomplishments and the team and stuff, but it's also a big year because you're trying to take it to the next level. You want to play college football. So you really have to have a great season. I mean, you, you, I'm sure you put some pressure on yourself, but I mean, you made history that senior year because if memory serves me right, you're the only player in the history of Cheshire Academy to be team MVP twice. And that's a real big accomplishment. So just talk about that because I mean, it shows, I mean, you had two careers when you think about it in high school. There was the career at Woodland, which you did tremendous at. And then you go to Cheshire Academy. And in two years, I mean, you put up these Hall of Fame stats for a high school football player. So, I mean, had to be a great feeling because, again, that's pressure in itself. You're going to a new school. You're trying to fit in. I mean, I think of like, you know, I don't want to compare it because you're a young kid, but I think of major league athletes who, you know, sign these big contracts and they're trying to do their best with their new team. You kind of had that same pressure because you wanted to fit in. And I'm sure, like you said to yourself, I got to really step my game up. So to be team MVP two years in a row and the first in school history to win it twice, that had to make you feel real good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, to win team MVP twice, I was was very honored for that. Um, But going into that year, um, going into my junior year, rather, I I definitely wanted, like like we said earlier, I wanted to prove those the people wrong that said I couldn't play at a prep school. But going into my senior year, I already proved those people wrong. Um, But I wasn't getting the looks at colleges that I hoped I would get after the year I've had. So I looked at it as, you know, I proved the people at my hometown wrong. I got to go prove these coaches wrong. So um, I definitely wanted to step it up another notch and step it up more. So um, as far as individual went, um, I really tried to focus on being the guy for my team, being the guy that they could go to when we need a touchdown, we need a first down, we need a tackle, we need an interception, whatever it is, I wanted to be that guy that they could go to. Right. And speaking of which, Jason, I mean, tomorrow will be your, uh, I believe, your your football banquet. So this will really kind of put a bow on your high school career. This will wrap it up. And I know you're excited to move on to the next level, which we're going to talk about in a second. But, I mean, there's got to be a bit of sadness as well that it's ending because if nothing else, I mean, these are kids that, I mean, I know you didn't grow up with a lot of these kids and you just got to know them the last couple of years. But again, you talked about the family aspect and being like brothers with these guys. So it's got to be bittersweet for you because while you're excited to take it to the next level, it's got to be sad that uh, it's over too. Yeah, definitely, definitely kind of sad, but I'm very excited for it. Um, When you think about it, you know, I'm, I spend every single day, day with these kids from, you know, in the summer workouts, two, three days, I'm spending 6 a.m. to, you know, 10 at night with these kids. So I'm really forming that brotherhood brown with them as I've only known them for maybe two years, but I feel like I've been with these kids for my whole high school career or even back to my elementary school days. I mean, I know these kids very well. And like I said earlier, I'll talk to them for the rest of my life. So leaving them like that and not really, and, you know, kind of just, um, you know, leaving high school football forever when you really think about it, it's definitely, um, definitely a little sad, but I'm very excited for college. Right. So let me ask you, Jason, I mean, never forget about like uh, what you did on the football field, the individual stuff, the team stuff. What's the thing that uh, was most memorable to you as a high school football player, just as far as friends went and playing with teammates and stuff like that? If there was one thing that stands out to you, what would it be? That's real tough. That's really tough. Man, a lot of good memories. But, I mean, um, probably my, my freshman year, I mean, there was nothing like my freshman year. I mean, the group of seniors that we had and then my in- incoming freshman class um, that I grew up with. Um, I mean, those kids are my best friends for life, My incoming the, that incoming fr- freshman class. And then those senior captains that really took me in and um, – they really made me feel welcome and they set me on my path for my football career. That definitely, when, when I think about everything, that was my favorite year of high school football was my freshman year. Right. So Jason, um, recently uh, it was announced that you've committed to Sacred Heart University. So let me ask you, um, number one, um, 
was it a difficult choice or did you pretty much know that this was the school you were leaning towards and talk about, you know, the excitement you have to um, be going to Sacred Heart and continuing your uh, not only football career, but uh, academic career as well. Yeah. So, I mean, the past couple of weeks, I really didn't know if it was Sacred Heart was really the school that I wanted to go to. Um, and I really was hesitant. But after the past week, I think last weekend, so I was on the official visit up there and I was talking with the coaches. I met with a couple of the players that play there now and a couple of the other incoming recruits. And um, let's say after that weekend, I really wanted, I really decided, you know, this is the place I want to be. Right. So let me ask you, I mean, um, what going into freshman year, I mean, obviously I know if I know you, you want to find a, you know, you want to be on that field. You don't just want to be on the sidelines. So I know you're going to work hard and stuff like that. But realistically, what will be the goal for you freshman year? I mean, is it more or less learning the collegiate game? I mean, what are your goals for freshman year? I would say my goal is to get on the field and play, definitely. Yeah. I mean, um, at the end of the day, I'm going there to play. I'm going there to make a difference, and I want to start and help that program. So, I mean, the goal for me would definitely, at the end of the day, be to start eventually for that program. If not, get on the field offensively reps i mean special teams whatever i could do i want to play and i mean you're going to a great school jason because sacred heart has had a tremendous football um program you know i think they uh they're they came into existence 1991 so they're about you know over 30 years old now as a program and they've really like i said you know i talked about woodland and the success woodland had in such a short time sacred heart's done the same thing i mean they're a tremendous college football program so, I mean, you're going to a great school and you're also going to get a great education. And that's the most important thing. So, I mean, you're getting to play with a great football program and you're also academically getting a great education. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I think maybe I think the four out of the last five years, they won the NEC conference. So definitely a great football program. And at the end of the day, like you said, academics, most important thing. So I'm going there to um, I'll be studying exercise science, trying to get my master's in that. So definitely a great school for that program as well. So it was definitely a good fit. Right. So, Jason, you know, I touched on this earlier, but uh, it's hard to believe. I mean, I, I, I could still remember your father playing, and it's hard to believe it's been 32 years. But if you think about it, 30 years ago, he was tremendous on the football field. 30 years later, you, his son, have had this unbelievable career. But, I mean, how proud is it that you and your father have been, like, tremendous high school football players who – did so much on the football field, you know, achieved so much, were tremendous football players. And you kind of get to share that bond with each other. And, I mean, it's got to make you feel good because, I mean, you saw what – obviously you didn't see him play, but you read about what he did as a player and now what you're doing as a player. And when I was talking to him earlier today, I mean, the thing that, like, really, you know, made me proud, like, you know, I've known him forever, is the fact that he said to me, I could care less what I did seeing my son do what he's doing means more to me than anything else. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So um, growing up, I would always see people and they would always tell me first thing, you know, people from Derby, they'd say, you know how good of a running back your dad was. Um, and it was always kind of, it was kind of weird because everybody would say that every single person I would see would say the same thing. You know how good of a player he was, you know, how good of a running back he was his senior year. He was phenomenal. And every single person I saw, I mean, it was the same thing. And um, as I grew up, I really understood the significance of, you know, the player he really was. And that team his senior year really was after all the, the newspaper articles, the, um, the film I've seen, the state plaques I've seen. So, I mean, it's definitely, um, definitely humbling that now I get to be in the position that I'm in now, seeing where he was and us getting to share that together. It's definitely, you know, something special. Right. So, Jay, let me ask you, I mean, um, you've had so many accomplishments like we talked about. I mean, in the classroom, on the football field, on the basketball court, you name it. I mean, you've kind of taken every challenge you've always uh, rised up to it. And I mean, you've hit a home run basically with everything you've done. So, I mean, sure, you're going to be a little nervous when you first get to Sacred Heart, but I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to continue to, um, you know, add to your resume as far as what you are as an athlete, because you seem to have that drive that you're, you don't want to just 
be on the team. You want to be on that field. You want to make things happen. So, I mean, it sounds like to me you're ready to go and nothing's going to stop you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm the person I am. I want to be an impact whoever I am. So I'm going to Sacred Heart and I'm committing there. I'm not committing there, you know, just stand, the, stand on the sidelines. I mean, whatever that coach wants me to do, Coach Nofri, uh, Coach Gardner, Coach, you know, all of the, all the coaches on that staff, whatever they need me to do to help that program, I'm willing to do that. You know, I'm going to work my butt off in the weight room, see what happens. But they want me to go out on special teams, make a play, return kicks, make blocks. I'll do that. They want me to get on the field, catch passes, and run for touchdowns. I'll try and do that. Right. And it just seems like to me, Jason, that <clears throat> you have the drive. I mean, you love the game of football. You really do. And let me ask you, I mean, when it's time to hang it up, I mean, is will you want to be in the game still? Like, will you want to be a coach? Because it looks like to me that you'd be an outstanding coach as well. I think you could add a lot to whether it's Pop Warner, high school, college. You could probably coach at any level because you have that commitment, like I said. So, I mean, is that a goal someday maybe to be a coach? Yeah, I mean, maybe one day, definitely. Um, I love the game, and I feel like I'll always want to be around it, whether that's um, in the training or coaching aspect. But um, I feel like football is really not something I can't live without. I mean, I've been been around it for – you know, longer than I've been alive. So I, that's what I feel like, really. But um, I can't remember a time where football wasn't in my life. And I can't think of a time where it won't be in my life. Well, that's awesome, Jason. And uh, I want to thank you for giving me a few minutes today. I mean, it was a real honor for me, I mean, to, you know, finally meet the next generation of the Palmieri's and that what you're doing as an athlete is unbelievable. And I mean, like I said before, just the fact that you did so much in four years for two different schools, that's remarkable because not everybody could say that, but you can. And I really do applaud you and really appreciate what you've given to the game of high school football. So congratulations on a wonderful high school football career. And I really look forward to watching you at Sacred Heart. I know you're going to do great things and best of luck to you. And thank you for giving me a few minutes today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. No problem. Well, there you have it, folks. You know, um, this kid has done so much in four years at both Woodland High School and Cheshire Academy. I mean, think about it. It's never easy to go from one school to the other and be able to do the things that this young man has done. And the thing that stands out to me the most about Jason Palmieri, though, is you heard him talk about his teammates. You heard him talk about his coaches, his friends, his family. That's what he appreciates more than anything else. His accomplishments are great, but you know what? They're, they're second to him. He cares more about his teammates, his family, his friends, and what they've meant to him. And just seeing how he carries himself every day as a high school football player, as a high school athlete, as a high, high school scholar, that's what stands out to me the most. And I know when he gets to Sacred Heart, we're going to watch him do more wonderful things because this kid is as dedicated as anybody comes. He's a champion, and he's only going to go up from here. For In the Spotlight, I'm Mike Kenichi saying, Good night, everyone.